I'm honored to introduce to you our student speaker, Vincent Ray Price. I encourage you to read Vincent's full biography in the program. Tonight, Vincent will be receiving his PhD in teacher education. He's a devoted educator with a commitment to providing students with access to literature from various perspectives. As a high school teacher, he brought literature from African American authors into his classes. And as a graduate student at UT, he has focused his scholarship on teaching literature. I first met Vincent a couple of years ago when I was invited to meet with the Multicultural Graduate Student Organization. He was one of the officers of that group, and I remember that in that meeting, his passion and commitment were evident in the approach he took to addressing difficult issues. Fast forward to spring 2017, and I again had a chance to interact with Vincent this time because he was a finalist in our three-minute thesis competition. <clears throat> I remember that he compared teaching black literature to looking at a garden. If you focus too much on the details of a single flower, you miss the beauty of the entire garden. But if you focus on the whole garden, then you miss the wonderful nature of each individual flower. He advocated that it is important to take time for both, exploring the unique contributions of individual writers, while also celebrating groups of authors. Personally, I think that's a lesson that can be applied to one's personal as well as professional life. Vincent's professors and classmates frequently comment on the contributions he has made at UT during his time as a student. He is an accomplished teacher, widely praised by his students and mentors. His scholarship and creative works are important contributions to our understanding of teaching literature. During his time in Knoxville, he has provided service to the community, his department, and to the university. While the list of his contributions is too long to mention tonight, in looking at his resume, it was clear to me that he exemplifies what it means to be a Tennessee volunteer. It is my pleasure to welcome to the podium Mr. and soon-to-be Dr. Vincent Ray Price. Bear with me as I soak all this in for right now. Okay. A few months ago, I traveled to Washington, D.C. for a tap dance festival. For this event, tap dancers, professionals, and amateurs alike, old and young, from all around the world, converged to celebrate the percussive style of tap. Near the end of the festival, everyone gathered in one large room for a panel discussion with the dance instructors there. And of the various questions asked, I remember one in particular. A young girl, no more than 10, raised her hand and asked, um, what is your favorite tap dance step? But rather than answer the girl's question, the lead instructor prompted everyone on the panel to go down the line and simply orally share a rhythm, simple or complex, but a rhythm nonetheless. And so it proceeded something like this. And And so after they finished that, of course, we were already impressed by their footwork, and now they can scat, so whoa. But after they had gone down the line, the lead instructor explained her rationale behind the, the girl's deferred question. Your question is irrelevant, she said. It's not about the dance steps. We just shared a string of rhythms that can be done with a variety of step combinations. So don't focus on the steps. Focus instead on the rhythm, on the sound that is produced as a result. It doesn't really matter which steps, basic or advanced, you land on that floor. 
It's what you do with those steps. What sounds rise from the floor that last in the memories of those around you. I feel that this applies to us with our various masters, specialists, and doctoral degrees. Yes, we know the steps, the hard-earned knowledge and skills. And yes, we develop them through long hours, accrued stress, grayed hair, and long, lonely hours of self-reflection. Yeah, it's what we do with those steps that matter more. Are we prepared to use what we know to create a sound worth listening to? Or do we simply expect those extra letters after our names to dance for us? Instead, I see these letters as tools that can amplify the sounds that we're already making. The catch, however, is that we first have to be making steps to begin with, making sounds to begin with, to then be amplified and to then reach the ears of willing and, of course, unwilling listeners. I'll be honest, I experienced great difficulty writing this speech. And then I was my, reminded of yet another lesson from that Tap Dance Festival's panel discussion. In sharing a one-line tidbit of wisdom, one instructor said the following, don't dance to impress, dance to express. And originally I was doing the exact opposite, struggling to write something profound to impress you. And it was only after I embraced the idea of expressing myself and writing something that I would want to hear that this speech came together. In other words, I focused on, a, on creating a sound that I both wanted and needed to hear. And in our increasingly chaotic world, it's important for us to do likewise, I think. Dedicate our energy to filling the air with sounds that we ourselves need to hear for the sake of who we are as educators, of who we are as scholars and researchers, of who we are as parents and children, of who we are as members of the community, of who we are as citizens to whatever nation we belong, of who we are as people. So let's not focus so much on the steps because they don't mean much if we ain't doing nothing with them. If we're not creating sounds worth listening to. So as we dance our way to the next stage of life, work, and productivity, what sound are we leaving reverberating behind us? And what sound are we sending ahead to announce our arrival? Thank you. <laughs>